uh, your your piece actually did air probably at least a half a dozen times, maybe more, and it was also uh, you know early on when this when the kids were here. And why you didn't get notified, I don't know. But uh, Frank was able to locate the disc and uh, and said that uh, it did go it did go on the air a number of times. So that's that's typically what we do. I'm I'm sorry about the lack of communication. At, uh, at this end, but, uh, but it is something that did air. Okay, uh, it doesn't make sense to me because I checked the scheduling for a couple of months after that and I never saw it aired once. Now, did Frank give you the dates when it was aired? Yeah, and actually the, the log keeping is kind of sloppy because the, the, um, the students sometimes do it and they're not all that accurate. But it, it wasn't something that went necessarily on the schedule. It was used several times uh, in, in between programs. I can't recall exactly how we used, but there are a lot of programs that go on, um, you know, just as time allows, because like a basketball game might end sooner than we thought. A city council meeting might last longer and change the scheduling. So, but it did go out there several times, and, um, I, and, and Frank is certain about that, but I, but I can't give you specifics beyond that. I'm sorry about that. Okay, uh, I wish I could verify that. I think that uh, trust but verify is a good process. <laughs> I, I know, and, and, but I hope you're getting the, kind of the sense here that it's a shoestring operation that, that uh, and, and, and that you got this one guy trying to keep it afloat and he is uh, He's doing too many things at once. I think that's part of the difficulties. And in my charge, just so you know, is to try to, uh, you know, uh, you know, bring some life and some port to uh, to the station, so it does operate a little bit more efficiently. And it's not all dependent on the one guy. But I know Frank. He's got a heart of gold, and he does not, you know, he, you know, when something gets in his hands, he gets it on the air. It's just how it goes. So I do have the disc for you if you wanted to to pick that up sometime. But uh, he was able to locate it. Okay. Um, well, without verification, I don't know if I can trust Frank speaking honestly because the man never returned phone calls. I don't know how many times he told me he, you know, he was going to call me back and just uh, kept blowing me off. And it was the same thing with that uh, Professor Hill. I mean, when I spoke to Frank first, I was told that, oh yeah, the students, uh, you know, it was a good time, the beginning of January, because uh, students would get involved, would want to get involved in the uh, process. Uh, you know, what it, the way it's supposed to work. So obviously, it isn't working the way it's uh, supposed to. And uh, I'm more interested in making it a teachable moment rather than trying to punish any one person or persons. And if that is the case, then we should try and get some p publicity out there so that uh, he can get the support he needs and he can run the way he's supposed to. Yeah, and I tell you, I'm, I, that's one of my, I mean, the FLTV is only just like a fraction of what I do here. But I can tell you, it's one of the things I spend a lot of time on because... Um, uh, you know, an inordinate amount of time on because I'm, I'm trying to raise some funding and some support. I just got a, a grant today, I found out, uh, for a thousand dollars, and it's not a lot, but it, every little bit helps. One of the things, it, you know, not to bore you with the details, but one of the things that FLTV really needs is auto, auto programming, digital auto programming, so that Frank doesn't have to be here to keep us on the air. Right now, FLTV has this antiquated equipment. And in order to keep on the air, you got to have somebody sitting at the control board and on the half hour or every 15 minutes sticking in a tape or a DVD to keep us on the air. You know, and modern equipment allows you to just program it in digitally. You can, you can program it, a, I think, a week at a time. And uh, then, then we're on the air 24 hours a day. And uh, a lot of programs get aired more frequently and that type of thing. But as it is now, our hours are inconsistent. And part of it is just the manpower need of having somebody babysit a control panel. So I'm trying to raise 35 grand to, to get that done. Uh, and we'll, you know, we'll get there eventually, not as fast as I'd like. But if, you know, in the future, if you have any questions about FLTV, um, you know, you're more than welcome to give me a call, and uh, and I'll I will be the, the in between guy uh, on this because it, you know it's no fault of Frank's. I'm I'm a I'm a big defender of his just because I know where his heart is. So right, I, I mean.
Okay, I can appreciate any hard-working people uh, who have good intentions. Uh, that hasn't been my experience with Frank. Unfortunately, uh, as I said, it was just being blown off time after time, no notification of anything happening, and uh, just no contact whatsoever. You know, everything uh, fell through, and uh, he was supposed to uh, get together with me, and we were going to do a publicity thing. I had other programs to follow down the line, and my experience was he blew me off, you know? And I have no dates, and nobody else saw it, so... Uh, somebody's word doesn't mean a whole lot when uh, they haven't uh, come through before and they haven't held it before. That's my experience and I don't know how many other people are out there. Now I can appreciate where you're coming from. Uh, your experience is different but you know there's a danger of your buddies you know so uh, cronyism is always a possibility. So I'm just letting you know that it hasn't been my experience with Frank and I wish that he'd given me the call and let me know this instead of you. You know, why wasn't he man enough to do that? Well, basically, I just took it off his hands. I, you know, I just didn't want any more. There wasn't anything, uh, Bob, there wasn't anything on his hands. The man never got back to me, never followed through on anything. You know, that I know of. Yeah, but I'm happy to take over on something like this just because I, I you know, I, when I talk to somebody and say something's going to happen, I, I follow through. So I wanted to do it personally and I'm, Okay, well, do you have my address? Um, I mean, could you mail that to me, or does it have to be picked up? No, I can mail that to you. That's fine. Okay. Let, you, uh, let me hang on a second, because I don't, I don't know that I have your address, but if you give it to me, I'll give it out in the mail. Right, right. Uh, have you got a pen handy? Yep, I'll send. Okay, 267 Crab Apple Drive. Crab Apple is one word? Yep. That's Cannon Dig, well, I know you know the zip code, right? 14424, right? That's it. Okay, fine, I'll get that out in the mail to you. I appreciate that, and uh, now I will think about getting something else on there, and now that I do have a contact person, because I would like to see this take off as well, uh, Maybe he can even help you raise the 35 grand you need so it can be done right. You never can tell. All right, well, we, take, we accept donations, so thank you very much, Bart. I'm, I'm giving you donations of art, original stories, and poetry. I mean, I don't have a penny myself to put to it, Bob, but we can try and uh, use the work and the stories and the poetry to get it, right? Well, you know, uh, however you, you'd like to approach that, I, I, you know, I, just, I welcome, the, uh, I welcome the, the moral support, not the financial support. It won't be just moral if it's artistic, okay? Yeah, all, right. all right. Very good. Good. Well, I'm glad you followed through on that. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll take it from there. All right. Thanks, Bart. Have a good Christmas and New Year, Bob. Same to you. All right. Bye now. All right. Bye-bye.